Blog Talk Radio. Always look up, never give up, and you will reach your goals. You're important, you're more than enough. And here she is, your host for Rolling with the Diva, Sabrina Williams. Thank you. Happy Thursday, December 19th. 2019. Wow. Next week is Christmas and then the following week is New Year's. And next week also starts Kwanzaa. Um, I think we're still in the middle of Hanukkah. And Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas. I'm saying that I'm not saying happy holidays because I've always said Merry Christmas since I was a child. I'm not the most politically correct politically correct person. Let me rephrase it. I am not politically correct. I have no shame in admitting that. And that's it. Anyway, all right. It's a beautiful night. It is about, I think, about 60 degrees. Let me see what my um my car says. Yeah, it's 50 degrees. I said 60 is 50. It's not that cold tonight. Last night it was 50 degrees and cooler. Um, actually, really cold, but I love the cold. Anyway, well, tonight we're going to talk about I'm too skinny, I'm too fat, just leave me now with my body. I have experienced a lot of commentaries from people in the last two years on my body when it comes to my surgeries or when people are looking at me after my surgeries or something and people are saying, you know, I'm too small, too skinny, too fat, too in between. I might as well be like the um, three bears. Oh, no, she's too small. No, no, let me hide. That is a three bear. So, oh, yeah, 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 that's right. It was the um, Annie and the three three um, different weights. Okay, I like that. So, weight number one was not enough. Weight number two was too much. And then you get to weight number three was just right. But then there's some come somebody along who's just not happy with your weight. The bottom line is, people, I'm glad you're listening to my show. I just want to remind you guys real quick that you are more than enough, you are very important, you are fabulous, and the only individual and God in the world that you should be worrying about your image, and not even worrying, is looking at how God sees you. He loves you as you are. You're not perfect. He didn't die for perfect people. He died for people who were sinners, who were lost. He came to save us all. And I say that because I'm really want people to know as I study to be a chaplain and the more and more I get older that God's love is the only thing that matters. Oh yeah, of course you can have the people who we are built meant to be in a community with and then be part of that. But at the end of the day, it's God's opinion what matters. And if you don't have that opinion of yourself down pat and on, on believing in yourself and in your self esteem and your love and everything, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks because you're going to allow different people to impact you, and you're going to be changing for everybody and getting all stressed out and um, going into different genres genres of eating and everything because you are letting other people impact you. That's not how it's supposed to work. We're here to impact each other, encourage and support each other, but we're not supposed to be so much where we're we're down on people. And, you know, this is not just something that starts as an adult. We all know because we've all been in high school, most of us in junior high, most of us, and some of us in elementary. And it starts early. You can see little kids, even, you know, some little kids at um, preschool that are picky about their foods. And, and people tell them, oh, you need to eat or you're going to be fat or you, you you don't eat your vegetables, blah, blah, this and that. I always say that all the men were sure just because they didn't eat their vegetables. I love that one because I love the, the um, Napoleon complex men. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> that just made me laugh. But anyway, but on a serious note, in a few minutes we're going to talk about body dysmorphic. I hope I did that right, and I'll pronounce it um, in a few minutes. But we're going to listen to a song. But what I want to do for everybody is I just want to first, I want to pray for everybody. Just just for just to pray for the season, because I know some people are not doing well. The holiday season, I don't care what time of year, whether it's Christmas, Easter, Valentine's Day, um, Smurf Day, okay, that's a holiday. But whatever holiday, some people just don't do well because it's the social anxiety that goes along with that. It's having to associate with other people that's going along with that. There's um, 
lot of family drama, a, va- a lot of family drama and trauma, literally. There could be having to go to a family, sadly, that you know that one of those people have sexually abused you, but the family just plays it off. You don't have to be in that situation. Now understand if you're a child, that's different. And um, parents, you shouldn't be allowing your child to go in that situation anyway. There is, you know, there's so many different things that have happened, you know, rape, incest, you know, domestic violence. Um, it's taken me five years to come back to the holiday after going through a very tumultuous divorce and having so many, um, so much trauma going along with that, that I just, whoa, and I'm just, just recently, just, this is, I went to my second um, Christmas party yesterday, and that's a whole other topic, that has nothing to do with this, but I mean, I went because I know the reason this season, which is Jesus, I still don't embrace the Christmas as the media and everybody puts on and buying gifts, because I have always believed, even before I got married, um, is that if you aren't talking to me, like, seriously, and you're not really my friend, and I know you're not, like, really into me and all that stuff, not like a relationship, but you're even family. I'm not buying a happy but gifts. You know why? Because why am I going to stand in line and do all that stuff for you when I know you wouldn't do it for me? And then I'm going to be upset because you didn't buy me that gift, and then I'm going to overeat and be anxious and look in the mirror a whole bunch of times and then get on the scale and, you know, I don't got time for all that. Nobody does. And a lot of you can relate to that. So that's what we're going to just, I just want to tell you guys, if you haven't finished your Christmas shopping now, give it up, go to Walgreens, um, buy some socks and a shirt, get them a bottle of apple juice, and call it a day and, you know, give them a card. Or you can make a little, you can just make cookies for everybody, or you can make a cake, or you can go to the store and slice up some cake and throw some ice cream and say, you need it. I'm just saying, I'm trying to help you, you know. About the count, but or you can give them nothing and write them a nice note, and that's what you should really do. See, I'm into the nice notes. I love those things. We're so much away from that. We're so much into it. Let me text you. Let me email you. And oh wow, you know what? Do something from the heart. But anyway, today this is going to be a touchy subject for a lot of people, and I know when people do listen to this, I'm not saying your body's dysmorphic. Um, but when we do some of these things, they go into different categories of overeating, of, of uh, emotional eating, of stress eating, anorexia, bulimia. There's so many different eating issues that people have that, you know, we should not take that for granted and assume just because we don't that somebody else doesn't. And that's why the holiday days can be really hard for people because a person who is, Bulimic may be may feel that they have to eat all this food to please these people, and then they go throw it up. That's um, and that's not how it has to be. And then there's a person who's anorexic and um, and they don't eat a lot because they've been told by people or they feel for some reason that they're not thin enough. You know, there's different mental health things going along with that, but it doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It's just things that are happening to you. And I would highly suggest, before we go into our song, everybody remember the number that I've been giving you for years, 211 in any city of the United States. That's 211. You can dial and get referrals for domestic violence, for counseling, sliding fee scale. The sliding fee means that either they're, they're going to charge you a very little amount, minimal amount, no amount, um, and they, or you can you know, maybe you don't, you have insurance, but you don't want this to go on your insurance record um, as far as, like, counseling. That's okay. It's your right. You can go and pay, um, you know, you can go and pay to a different counselor. You don't have to go to your work. Um, I totally understand that. Because um, sometimes some of the jobs we get, they want to look into those, and then they want to say, oh, you have to you know, get mental health counseling. Yeah, we all we all could use mental health counseling because we're in a world that has a lot of problems. But if you meet anybody that says they have no problems, you need to move away from them because they're lying. And um, okay, let me stop. Anyway, I'm always having something to say about something. But anyway, just know that even if they've never had any problems, they don't have any problems. Life is perfect. They probably know Donnie and Marie. That's a running joke because Donnie and Marie family always says they never had any problems. Or, you know what, they're delusional and you really do need to get away from them because we all have something that goes on with us 
and even though we don't want to admit it, we do. So um, that's just just something to say. But um, I want to let's pray, dear Jesus. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you give us. Thank you for the people who are going to be listening to this radio. May they know that you are the God of love, the God of mercy, the God of grace and forgiveness, and that there is nothing that they cannot do that will turn you away from loving them. And whether they've just heard for the first time today that they are loved, they are loved, that that's okay, and know that, and that they don't have to keep walking down the same road by themselves. We are here on earth as a community, whether people want to believe it or not, and let them know that there's somebody who cares for them. If there's somebody who is who is suicidal right now and they're struggling, please, Lord, let them call 911 or get let them talk to somebody. And if you are listening to this and you are suicidal, I pray that you would call 911 immediately. If you have suicidal ideations, please call 211 or get to the nearest emergency room, too. Lord, we pray all these things in your son's name. Amen. Well, I'm driving, as you guys can tell, because you guys can probably hear all the clicking. But now I am in my driveway, and I'm looking for my glasses, which were on top of my head. And um, and now let me see what they are. Oh, they're still on top of my head, and I just took them off. But yeah, there they are. Okay. And now I'm finding, coming to the part where I'm finding the music. Oh, that's not the music. But I do want to tell you guys, you know what? I'm really serious. Please, please don't be out there trying to please everybody with gifts. You know what? It's not going to change anything. All right. We are going to play a song by Appointed, and here we go. Sheets of rain falling down, people moving all around. Some never think how great you are. Some never feel with a clean heart With all that you do and all that you've done The fact that you gave your only son You think they'd all cry Glory, hallow be thou name Most excellent, most God Stars in the moon sing Gloria You're so excellent Oh, in a day gone tomorrow Days of joy and days of sorrow Some even ask what life's about Some live and don't see your other way out If they'd only look and see Your glory in the great heavenly They'd have to cry out Glory Hallow be thou name Most excellent And the heel sing Gloria, you're so excellent. Only oh, you are no one's holy like you are. You are Yes, there's none besides you. You are and there's no rock like you, Lord. No rock like you, Lord. My glory is God, you are yes, you're glorious in your greatness and your power, in your majesty and your victory. Somebody say, is he, is it a you? He is the man. In the beauty of His holiness, go on and worship Him, worship. 
about body images and sometimes I think it's just for me I just want to really talk about this because I really have been impacted in this because a lot of times when people say oh you're too skinny or you're you know too fat or you're not fat enough or not skinny enough it really bothers me because I feel like I'm trying and then somebody says something to me and then I'm just like all weirded out and I'll tell you sometimes I do overeat sometimes I'll go over exercise there's different ways that it can impact us but um I got this from albertellis.org, Body Images Issues, March 27, 2012. Body image issues are a common problem in a society that promotes unrealistic body ideals. It is challenging not to get caught caught up in comparing oneself to to these unrealistic standards. As a result, many individuals may experience depression, anxiety, anger, or even self-loathing. In addition to affecting an individual view of self, poor body image may also result in avoidance of social situations and may interfere with developing healthy social and romantic relationships. And I'm just going to read you, it's called Body Dysmorphic Disorder, BVD. I'm not saying that anybody is. I'm not a counselor. That is not my goal. I'm just passing on information. But I just thought this is just the best way to sort of kind of bring all of those different ones that I was talking about earlier, anorexia, and um, anorexia, um, bulimia, overeating, emotional eating together so you can get a, a constant understanding of what's going on through people's minds. And some of this you guys may have felt it doesn't mean you have that. It's just I'm just bringing it to light. Again, I'm not a trained counselor. You can call 211 in your local area, or you can go through your employee assistance program if you feel you need counseling. And here's the definition. BDD is a psychological disorder that involves a misperception of one or more body areas. Individuals with BDD perceive a defect or flaw in their appearance. It is either very small or non-existent. And I'm going to add to that. This is just my part. I'm finished reading. Sometimes there is flaws. Like for me, I, when my leg was really bent outward, I really um, felt my leg was just hanging off of me, even though it wasn't. But that's what I saw when people looked at me because people were always like, what happened to your leg? Why is it like that? Why don't you get it fixed? And that can really weigh on a person. I'm going to continue reading. Areas of concern often involve flaws to the face or head, hair thinning, acne scars, redness, wrinkles, facial um, symmetry, size, shape, and facial features such as the nose, mouth, lips, and we all can relate to that. Other areas of concern may include but are not limited to genitals, breast, buttocks, abdomen, hips, and thighs. Individuals suffering from BDD are preoccupied with the perceived defects, and there's a lot of people who don't even have this who are preoccupied with those. Look at the, look at the media. Look at the people, the stars going to get things fixed. Look at the humans around us. Um, Las Vegas is a hub for people coming here to get plastic surgery to a point where it causes clinically significant distress in several areas of functioning. And the only people who I can think of that have this are some of the people that want to look like Barbie and Ken or they're trying to look like a certain image. They may, and that's just my opinion, they may spend excessive amounts of time checking their appearance in the mirror, putting on makeup, or otherwise making their appearance and seeking reassurance. I used to always seek reassurance of my of how I look from people because um, I was never told as a young person or even as a child, oh, you're cute, you're adorable, you know, anything like that. So I always was seeking from sources that I probably didn't need to. And I think we all can fall in that category a little bit. Again, I'm not a counselor or a therapist. I'm just a person who's studying to be a chaplain who has a master's in psychology. Um, but the point is I see these things for myself and I'm seeing them from other people and I've seen how I've suffered through. So sometimes this information can be helpful for everybody. You take it and you apply it. And if it doesn't apply to you, that's okay too. 
as a result of high levels of anxiety, depression, embarrassment, shame, and self-disgust are frequent um, present. And, I mean, I think if we all as humans admit we have some challenges with some of these things that are talked about, we just sort of kind of play them off better than other people. So I think if we all got real, it'd be a really, we wouldn't need this definition. But I can understand when I go to the word extremes. But I just want to tell you guys, I'm going to play another song because it's the holiday season. I just want to keep you uplifted that sometimes saying no can help a lot of these issues because we don't want to say no to people because they can guilt us into things, and then we use our own ways of coping with it. And it's your way of coping with it, um, eating. But the thing today is not about that. It's about, like, how I, how you have to see yourself because people, when they tell you things like, oh, you're too fat or you're too skinny, and I know I keep saying it because I want you to hear, it doesn't matter to God. He loves you as you are, even if you have to lose weight or gain weight. The fact is you're loved as you are. Don't let human beings tell you any different. The people who you trust around you, yes, if somebody says, you know what, I'm really concerned about you because you're taking medicine for diabetes and stuff, there's a way they can come to you as a loved one and somebody who loves you, whether it's a family or friend. But if these are just everyday general people, like when, especially for high schoolers and junior hires and things like that, wow, Take it for what it's worth. And this also goes along with college campuses. When you get to college, we're still growing as adults. And even as adults in real jobs and working over 40, we've seen people who at work treat us different from somebody else who's, you know, too fat or too skinny or whatever their perception is. Just don't get caught up in that. Now the thing for everybody is because I'm standing upright now and my leg is not off to the side, everybody thinks, like, you're way tall. And that's just one thing I always hated hearing when I was younger, and I still don't hate it. I just like, oh, my God, really? Of course I'm tall. I'm 5'8 and taller, okay? I've shrunk a little bit. But it's like, wow, okay. And it's like I heard that last night like when I was, when I was at the Christmas party. And this is why I like to just be by myself because, you know, people all – I don't know why people always have to talk when I, oh, wow, you're tall. Like, is that all you see? But I just like, oh, yeah, yeah, thank you, and or just don't even acknowledge it because – you know, even strangers will say, oh, wow, you're tall. Yeah, okay. It's not like you don't know tall people. It's not like I'm in the, you know, 1500s. We're in the 21st and over, going on over century. So come on, get with it. And that's just what I want to tell you guys. Don't let things like that or people get to you. And I really can't because I have to really tell myself yesterday, no 10 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches um, with just because it bothered me that much, I had to just really get real and just say, you're okay, it's okay to be tall. Um, and I'm really proud of being tall now. Um, okay, so we're going to play one more song, and then we're going to be off the air. And, um, again, go to Walgreens. Why do I say Walgreens? I love Walgreens. No, they're not saying me. I'm just saying. Oh, I wanted to tell you guys, if you love freebies, you need to check out the freebie guy and Julie's freebies. Look for them on um, Instagram. If you love Dollar General, you want to check out the freebie guy because he has this list of freebies that on certain on Tuesdays, well, this week it was Wednesday, that things are like a penny, a literal penny. You can go in there and get 300 items if that's how many they have, but there's certain things on the list. I went in there and got um, spaghetti sauce for a penny. And it's just things that they don't tell you about. You don't ask them, read the guidelines, but it's freebie guy. Look for him on Instagram. Tell him I referred you. No, I'm not getting paid for this. I just love sharing freebies. And if you're following me on Instagram at Sabrina Deneen Williams, S-A-B-R-I-N-A-D-A-N-E-E-N-W-I-L-L-I-M-S. Those are, that's at um, Instagram. Um, I'm on Twitter. And look for me, and you know what? I can... Um, refer you. Freebies are fun. I've saved a lot of money. It's a great way. Listen to me, y'all. It's a great way to give gifts, and you don't have to pay out of your pocket. Mm-hmm. Especially for those people who you know don't be shopping for gifts for you. Mm-hmm. All righty. We are going to play a song. I hope that you guys will tune back in on Sunday and um, and listen to Rolling with the Diva. It's always a pleasure and an honor to play music for you guys, have you on the, on my show have you listened to my show i know you have many many um opportunities for shows you listen to on podcasts but i really truly um, appreciate you listening to mine all right we're gonna play another song and then we are going to be off the air
Yes, we are. Don't you love a little applause? I love it. I'm sorry. I just think it's cute. Here's a commercial from Queen Sylvia, and then we'll play this song. Hey, this is Sylvie, host of the Queen Sylvie Show on the Fishbowl Radio Network. Check out the show every Tuesday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. You can hear me keep it real about everything while making a difference promoting comedy and other artistic talents from the Dallas-Fort Worth area and around the world. Don't miss the Queen Sylvie Show. Ahala. On FishbowlRadioNetwork.com. Jump in. This is Nettie, the only one. See you guys Sunday. You're the only one. 